Hello, and welcome to another episode of Author Fan Face Off. We've got one great author, one big fan. We pick a book by that author, and we're going to find out who knows more. I'm Steve Shankin, Woo! and my co host is, of course, the leaping librarian, Stacey Ratner. Hello. Woo! And our guest today, Nathan Hale, coming to us from Utah. Thanks for joining us. Hello, hello. Now, Nathan has a lot of great historical nonfiction, graphic novels, as well as other books. We're going to focus on your most recent historical comic, The Blades of Freedom. I've always been struck that we do, that what we do, you and I do are similar in a lot of ways, but we're getting history out of the health food aisle, hopefully, and making it fun. But it's also what, what you do, what, the other thing you do that I thought was similar was that you really, you pack a lot in there, man. You know? <laughs> You know, like, and I try to do that too with my nonfiction. I want it to be a story, but man, I go for it. You just put in as much as you can. And I thought, that's ambitious. I really like that. Oh, thank you. This one might be a little too packed. I'm nervous about these questions. There's a oh. lot going on <laughs> in this one. There's a lot going on. I don't know, Bruce, your uh, challenger might look a little nervous too. Stacy will do the introductions. <laughs> we'll find out. It's great to always have one of my former students on with me. And this is Bruce. He is a seventh grader from upstate New York. He worked for me in the library for two or three years, was an amazing library helper. Yeah. But he also was an amazing reader and hazardous tales he could not get enough of. So um, when this worked out to have you with us, Nathan Hale, I knew the first person to go to would be Bruce. So, and it's just so good to see you. Um, but we're going to jump right in. You ready? You guys ready? Bruce, you're going to get the first question and then I'll ask one to Nathan and then Steve will, will take over. All right. So the first one is, what type of insect is the Aedes aegypti? Bruce. You know. Yep. Okay. And Nathan, the Aedes aegypti in the story declares herself special because she can spread this dreaded disease. Oh, nobody that spreads disease is special, but it's a uh, yellow fever. All right, you guys are doing, see, you feel better about it now? <laughs> pandemic questions during a pandemic. Yeah, right. Well, it was the mosquito, you know, that was that was her own take on the situation. But like I said, this story takes on a lot of big parts of history. The French explorer La Salle, this is for Bruce. The French explorer La Salle claimed Louisiana for France after sailing down this waterway to the sea. Oh, uh, the Mississippi. Right. And for Nathan, as a young man, Francois Macandal was taken from West Africa to this Caribbean island. Uh, the island, uh, the French colony of San Domingue. Mm. Yeah. And now we have the big elements of the, of the story kind of set up. You have the, the location, you have some of the main characters, the powers you are going to be fighting, uh, the fact that disease and mosquitoes will play a part. Like I said, there's a lot going on here, which I mean is a compliment. <laughs> All right. Now, and then Napoleon comes in. Yeah. And Napoleon Bonaparte was born on this island, Bruce, in the Mediterranean. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, Corsica? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Got it. I, <laughs> you got it, Bruce. Awesome. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> All right, Nathan. The narrators tell us that McCondell became a maroon. What was the meaning of this word? Ah, in the in the context of this story, the uh, the maroons of San Domingue were. Uh, enslaved people who had escaped and were living in the wilderness. All right, Bruce, this is going well for everybody. Tight race so far. In the early 1800s in the island of San Domingue produced half the world's supply of this valuable crop. Sugar? Say it again? Sugar? Yeah, I knew you said it right, but I just wanted to hear it. Yeah, and that's another big factor in this story. All right, Nathan. Thomas Jefferson was obsessed with gaining U.S. control of this key Mississippi River city. Ah, Thomas Jefferson wanted uh, New Orleans. 
Yeah. He didn't, uh, he didn't even want the rest of it. <laughs> he didn't want that Louisiana purchase that much. It wasn't even on his, it wasn't even on his mind, but he really wanted to, to have a piece of that Mississippi uh, port in, in New Orleans. He wanted it. He needed to have it. Good. So All right. Far. I mean, you guys are doing great. Just two more. Oh boy. I, I love this, this part and, and I love this character. Well, character, Pauline uh, Bonaparte. <laughs> um, when Pauline Bonaparte's husband died, this is for you, Bruce. She ordered this part of him cut up and put in a silver urn. Uh, his heart. Oh. <laughs> um, and I remember, any detail, any things to share about that, Nathan? Because you're <laughs> I just, it's gross. <laughs> and, and why is it funny? I don't know why, but somehow, for some reason, it's kind of funny. Gross is carried good. it around with her, right? Carried it around. <laughs> Back in the olden days when I used to write textbooks, and I admit I did that. That's the kind of thing you would want to put in, and they would never let you put that in. But of course, it's the kind of thing that Bruce remembered, and everyone who read it would remember. And then all those so-called important things would become really easy to remember too. But I could never, could never convince them to put those kind of details in the official history. So I'm glad you're doing it. Ah, uh, I, I know sometimes in books, they'll have a little call out that says, you know, fun fact. Yeah. And they'll put it in. Right, right. And I wish the whole book was just a fun facts, you know, right. let's cut out all the other stuff and just stick to the fun facts. <laughs> I don't know um, if that's a fun fact, but it's a gross fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nathan, one last question for you. Uh, right. When he was arrested, this leader warned the French, you have cut down in St. Domingue only the trunk of the tree of liberty. It will spring up again by the roots, for they are numerous and deep. Uh, that is the great leader Toussaint Louverture. All right, we sort of suspected that you guys were going to be experts, so of course we came uh -huh. prepared with a bonus question and another tiebreaker if we even need it. But all right, I'm gonna go back to the mosquito. It's amazing how much mosquitoes have changed history. I've often thought I could write a whole book about that. But this mosquito character informs us that mosquitoes need two things to survive. And the bonus question is, can either of you name one or both of the two things the mosquito says she needs to survive? Anyone wanna go first? Just thinking. I've got. I'll, I'll, I can do one. What do you think? And you want to try the other one? I think they need fresh water to lay their eggs in. Fresh water, still water. Yeah. You got the other one. They're kind what of famous. Yeah, they're kind of famous for this. Oh well, is it the? Sucking blood? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We got blood. It. We're keeping this tie alive. It's just, luckily we do. <laughs> um, we have, you have those, these on your sheet too, right, Stacey? There's a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that second one. Okay. Um, right, because everything. that didn't come up earlier. Yes. All right. After their successful rebellion, the people of San Domingue give this name to their country. Raise your hand if you know it. Oh. Oh, uh, Haiti. Yeah. We got it. Excellent. Wow. You guys, I think I would have failed if I was being uh, challenged on this book. <laughs> that was a lot. See, but that's my Very point about fun. how to teach history. Look how much, look how much you learned. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, and it wasn't like you studied it. It's just when something is presented in such an entertaining way, you just naturally remember it. Especially so. if it's gross and weird. Yeah. And by entertaining, I mean gross. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs>